My name is Julie Chineda, and I'll be reading to you from my latest release from Daw Books, Mirage. Mirage continues the adventures of my favorite character, Essen, the semi-immortal, shape-shifting blob of good intentions. With her human friend, Paul, she's set up a library that aliens can bring their problems to be resolved. As long as no one guesses what Essen really is, they'll be fine. I entered the library for this day's spot of work using the nearest gate from the garden. It wasn't a pretty gate, being a field portal fitted with biosensors, but in winter I appreciated how the grate in the floor whisked away any deplorable melting snow. I was somewhat disheveled and damp, but on time. For some, on time might be in place and ready to help Henry at the assessment desk or Ali Orman at the response room. For me, it had evolved into more Essence said hello to someone in the building, so she is here, but no one knows where exactly. Scallet would. We negotiated. There had been raised voices and drool, but some of the snoops she'd hidden in every nook and cranny during the library's construction must be deactivated. Paul remained unconvinced we'd any privacy. Fortunately, my webkin considered it beneath her to inform mere ephemerals where I was. At the moment, damp and disheveled me was in the chow for a bracing hot drink before being on time. Once Lambeau cooperated. Soon didn't appear likely. The back of a shiny black carapace remained presented to me, marred by impermanently embedded footprints. Evan Gooseberries, as it happened, not that any of us had the nerve to tell the Carassian his last molt hadn't been perfect. You know you can do it. You made Esselesi hot fudge tea. You stink. My damp fur might have a slight musty tang. Once I have the drink, I'll leave and take my stink with me. No, a stocked eye peered over the carapace to glower at me. You are not Esselesi. I kept my ears lifted in a pleasant expression, though sorely attempted to remind the character I was in charge, along with Paul, pulling rank, wouldn't budge Lambo. She told me you made the very best she'd ever had, if the only. While my licious self found fudge irresistible however it was consumed, Lambo's version of fudge tea was the first. A second eye stock joined the first. Esselesi has good taste. When she's back, you can try hers. A third. She is coming back, isn't she? Lambo was rude to everyone, except Paul. So it was possible I'd missed a development of fondness from my other self. More likely, this Carassian didn't like change. She'll return in spring. Lambo, please. I've been outside and I'm chilled. I'll take any hot beverage you'll make for me. The Carassian rattled around to face me, great claws down, handling claws up, and in one was a cup of steaming liquid. The clever scoundrel had known what I'd ordered the instant I'd walked into the chow. Here. I took the cup. Thank you. At last. But it wasn't fudge tea. It couldn't be. It was green. I looked up in dismay. What's this? Your hot beverage, with an unsettlingly coy tilt to every eye stalk. You can't poison me before I've started work, I objected, refusing to be intimidated. Paul won't be happy. A claw snapped. Fudge. I curled a disdainful lip and lifted the cup. This isn't fudge. Then you aren't being poisoned, are you? Oh. I'd probably spent too much time as a lishin. I looked down at the cup again and lapped up a little of the froth with my long tongue, which wasn't done by proper Lanavarians, being the only one around had its advantages. Mint. Creamy, hot mint. And while my preference would have been to roll in it, which was in fact proper behavior if done with friends, this would definitely do. Locks are serious business in Raticilla as they are across Sacra Seven and throughout the worlds of Sacra's system. Locks and hinges, bars too, and anything to keep the out where it can be observed with caution and care, where reasoned judgment can consider consequences, for what isn't of the in poses the greatest danger to the whole, so says instinct, so says law. Thus it is after caution, care, and gravely reasoned judgment, the breeding group in this humble sacristy home agree the one lingering out for the past three solars, snuffling at doors and vents, is indeed their offspring, she who had been taken for treatment. Agreed joyfully that this lock should open, this bar lift, and this door ease open sufficient to permit the half-grown pup to enter, then close, lock snapping sh 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 shy of her tail. 
the bar goes down behind the pup's pine panting form as those already in retreat to individual secure cubbies there to observe from safety before offering more. The offspring should be grateful, should remain prone and submissive until the will of those already in is revealed. Understanding acceptance is not done in haste. Any sacrosy would. This one is different. This one rises to stare into peepholes meant to protect those in, and when those in see her wrong yellow eyes, they agree in sorrow what they must do, what sacrosy have always done, call the different. Ula is thrust out, locks and bars thumping into place behind her. She staggers away across the cobblestones, stops to stare at the blood streak blue over her hands and throat, knows it's wrong to fight the will of the inn. As she's fought, there are those in pain behind the locks and bars. The authorities will be called. There is one dead. The authorities will hunt her. She stands out and desperately alone. Unfair, unjust, she belongs in. She is not wrong to be culled. Her nasal bulb swells, ready to uh, voice her agony. But when she does, as she does, what comes from her isn't an anguished, eloquent spit. What comes is a deep, shuddering howl. Ula cringes, the sound is wrong. Witnesses retreat and close their peepholes. The tiny pops as each are locked like rain hitting sand. All abandon her. Her kin, their neighbors all, how could in the most basic right be forbidden? Defiantly, Ula howls again, and she whips her tail, leaving the scar of her outrage on the wall of what had been home. Howls, a distant echo, another howl, and she leaps from shadow to shadow to find what answers her grief. <laughs>